A linear array transducer with a venous exam type is used to perform an ultrasound-guided insertion of a subclavian vein catheter via a transverse approach. The patient is in a supine position with the head neutral. The operator should stand to the patient's right side. The transducer is placed transversely, just inferior to the mid-portion of the clavicle, with the orientation marker directed to the patient's head at a 12 o'clock position. The hyperechoic clavicle can be seen in the superior portion of the ultrasound image. The vein is dark and anechoic, just inferior and deep to the clavicle. The transducer should be slowly moved 1 to 2 inches toward the shoulder with the face of the transducer staying below the clavicle to obtain the best view of the subclavian or axillary vein. It is important to note that the lung lies directly posterior to the vessel, so posterior wall puncture of the axillary vein should be avoided. Adjust the transducer so it is centered over the vein. Follow the needle entry by slowly sliding the transducer in the direction of needle advancement. The needle will appear as a small, bright, hyperechoic dot. When the needle tip appears, the transducer should be advanced a short distance distally to follow the tip of the needle trajectory and stay in advance of the needle entry. The needle is slowly advanced under direct ultrasound visualization until the tip is seen to puncture the subclavian vein. The probe should be moved slightly proximally and distally to confirm that the needle tip lies in the mid-portion of the vein. Start by identifying the clavicle. Visualize a line at a right angle to the body's midline and align the probe with it. Tilt cranially until the subclavian vein and artery come into view, here highlighted in blue and red, respectively. Note that it's not always possible to achieve a view where both vessels are visible at the same time, but it's vital to identify both in order to avoid an accidental arterial puncture. The artery usually pulsates and is located deeper, more cranially, while the vein is shallower and expands and contracts with the respiratory cycle, though note that it might actually pulsate due to the proximity to the artery. Prep a wide area, including the clavicle and up on the neck, following your local guidelines. Place the drapes and make sure to leave some space on the neck above the clavicle. Position the probe as far medially as possible where the vessel is less prone to collapse and the diameter is larger. This is especially important in the hypovolemic patient. Inject the local anesthetic superficially a few centimeters from the probe. Cover the point of cannulation and where the sutures will go. Then inject towards the vein, but avoid puncturing it. Use the empty 2cc syringe as an improvised handle and place the index finger along the cannula to facilitate lateral displacement. Advance the cannula towards the vein in a continuous motion, but proceed only if you see the needle tip. Aspiration of dark non-pulsatile blood indicates that we've successfully punctured the vein. Insert the guide wire in the usual fashion and confirm its correct position by identifying a hyperechoic line in the subclavian vein. Next, move the probe to the neck. If the guide wire has deviated cranially, this will be seen as a hyperechoic dot in the internal jugular vein. This is readily apparent in this sequence from another patient where we were able to immediately retract and reposition the guide wire. Tilt the probe caudally and keep the jugular vein in the middle of the screen to find where it merges with the subclavian vein to form the superior vena cava. With this maneuver, the correct guide wire position can be verified. Note that the hyperechoic medial pleura, marked in green, may have a similar appearance as the guide wire, and for the novice, this is a potential pitfall. Proceed with the central line in the usual manner. Then further confirm the venue's placement by observing the height of a non-pulsatile blood column. We're currently performing a validation study, but we believe that most post-procedural x-rays will be redundant if the guide wire position has been confirmed using this technique.